Hello to all you lovely people out there. Welcome back to this new episode of what's happening with the Cake Face family. I appreciate all of you guys and I hope you're having a wonderful start to your 2020. Well, every year I'm at to LA. It's a big deal. I finally got to go back again this year. It was so very extra special and exciting for me because I have a friend, Danny. Hey, Danny. Who hosted me in LA and we went to the IMAT show together as well as went to some other makeup show, show stores that she frequents. So I got to see an insider's uh, local makeup artist view of the makeup scene in LA and it was amazing and it was so fabulous to hang out with my good friend Danny. So I had a great weekend. Of course I did some shopping. One of my highlights of IMAT's LA was seeing the Hakuhodo booth. There is a Hakuhodo store in LA. I didn't get to go to that, but I did get to see their whole entire setup at IMAT's and it was fan it was fantastic. It was like a dream. Walking into heaven and seeing all those brushes <laughs> lined up there. Amazing. I don't know if you guys had seen this brush I got recently, but not from iMats. And it is the Hakuhodo S100. Now this is part of their Vermilion line, which is a little bit pricier with the gold ferrule, the blue end, and the Vermilion handle. This is a goat hair brush. And I wanted to add to that this one here. This is the Hakuhodo S5521B. This one is a highlight tapered brush and the bristles are 32 millimeters in length. It's so ultra soft. They have a squirrel hair version, but I opted for this guy it was because it's actually made of a combination of goat hair and horse hair. And both of those are a lot more durable. It has a really nice stiffness while also having enough give that it's so incredibly soft. So a similar brush is this one right here. This was my very first Hakuhoda brush I ever purchased. It's their small Yakio brush and I knew I wanted to pick up the large Yakio brush. This one will now be my travel and this one will be my go-to at home. This is goat bristle brush. By the way, all of my brushes I have already washed and dried, so this is their fluffed out version. Really great for all kinds of different tasks. It's a little bit bigger in bristles than the 5521B and a little bit shorter in handle length. This guy, it's funny because I don't see this exact brush on the website. I didn't look that hard, but I typed it into the search bar and what came up is a little bit different of a handle shape. But this one here is the B214 and it is an eyeshadow brush, a very large goat hair eyeshadow brush that I plan to be using mostly for the face, underneath the eyes, nose contouring, stippling on cream highlights, anything of that nature. I can definitely buff around the eyes, but I tend to like slightly more precise eye brushes. It's quite dense and round and oh so soft, like any of these brushes. I'm very excited about this one because of just how round it is. Reminds me a little bit of a contouring brush my friend just spotted at TJ Maxx that's from Kevin Aquan. I haven't compared the two side by side, but that's in my head just because we went to the store the other day and he found that fabulous brush. Nice and round tipped. This wasn't a plan find. It was one that I fell in love with when I was at the stand. It wasn't in my shopping cart already. Absolutely fabulous little basic type of brush. Another vermilion handled brush that was absolutely planned. This was in my shopping cart and it is the S150. It is a small detailer goat haired flat brush that sits at an angle 
the paddle is just slightly angled and this is going to be absolutely fabulous for cutting out the crease, for shaping the brows, for shaping around a wing, anything that requires cleanup or lay down. I'm very awesome. I'm excited about all these brushes, but you know what I mean. Very excited about that. We have a couple blending type of brushes, and these are gonna be slightly trickier because some don't even have numbers on them. We'll start with what does have numbers on them. This is the J5529. Again, a goat hair bristle brush. Compared to a Haku brush I already had, the S. 146. This one here is this goat hair one is a little bit smaller. They're both small eye brushes. I'm very excited about this one. It has a nice stiffness to it. Compared to squirrel bristles, these goat hair bristles have more stiffness to them. They create a really easy application and blend and uh, squirrel hairs are a lot softer and give less movement to the product. I got another squirrel <laughs> blending brush similar to the goat brush that I bought but in squirrel hair, the G5529BKSL eyeshadow brush. And as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the squirrel hair brush I already had. It's this middle one here. It comes to a little bit more of a point. Okay, now for one of my favorite purchases. This right here is the Hakuhoto G5515, and it is the teeny, tiniest pencil brush I have ever seen. Now my friend Danny recommended this one to me. She uses it all the time. She was like, Jessica, when we go, you need to get this brush. And man, is it good. So good. I used it in my look today. It's fabulous. For comparison's sake, if you have the Sonia G Pencil Pro, this is the difference in size we're talking about. I mean, can you even see it? It's so incredibly precise, perfect for smudging out liner for any kind of detail work, really. It's fabulous. Teeny, teeny tiny. Like, I don't consider the Sonia G to be a giant pencil brush. It's pretty standard size to me. I have quite a few that are larger than my Sonia G. And man, does this brush fall into its own sort of category. Like, that is teeny. For some more very unique brushes, size-wise. So this one right here is the G535 BKSL. And it is an eyebrow brush. And this guy is the biggest eyebrow brush I have ever seen. So good. It's a uh, water badger bristles and it basically covers half my eyebrow in one swoop. I am obsessed. This is a pricey eyebrow brush and for good reason. You get so many bristles, it covers so much ground. You're able to stay fairly precise with that close pinch, but it is very large and all about fast and easy. I'm obsessed. My brows are fairly straight, and so this just makes it swipe, swipe, and I'm done. I am so excited. I previously have been obsessed with my Chikahoto eyebrow brush, which is, to me, a very large brush. And look at how they compare. This one is just, I don't know, more than twice as wide. And compared to a normal sized eyebrow brush, here is the Isam B15. Look at that. It's huge. This thing is ginormous. Ginormous. Oh, I'm obsessed. I knew I wanted to get this one for sure. It a, has a 12 millimeter measurement from the end of the ferrule to the top of the higher 
point of the bristles. I'm not sure what the width is, but yes, I got the largest brush they had in this Water Badger because I love that bristle type. My new baby. You guys know I'm obsessed with brow brushes and, and products because that was like my first makeup product I wanted was a brow product. <sighs> so good. Okay, finally from Hakuhodo, I did get the brush I was most excited to get. And this one is the F1240. Now this one is a mix of squirrel and goat hair and it's just about the softest brush I own. So good. I mean, squirrel brushes on their own are probably softer, but this mix is amazing. This is a fan brush. I really wanted to pick this up because it'll be perfect for highlight, blush, finishing powder, all kinds of things. I really like these fan shapes recently, and I know Hakuhodos are so, so good. I was tempted to pick up the squirrel hair version of this, the one with all squirrel hair, but this one will be slightly more durable, have a little bit more grip to it, and I can always get that one later. This one was also more affordable because of the mix of hair. I am very pleased with this. I think it's fabulous. And I actually was interested in getting an eyeshadow or small pinpoint version of this brush as well. But the one I went in thinking I would get ended up being put to the side when I saw this one. I really, really love the shape of this guy. And there was a similar one that was not, that I didn't like quite as much because this one tapers. When you look at it to the side, it actually tapers. Whereas the other one had it all the way throughout. And I really like how it tapers across the side there. This one here is the F6441. This one will be great for pinpoint highlighting, even light, soft contouring, highlighting the brow bone, sweeping across the eye, anything of that nature. So these two I consider to be a pair in my mind. <sighs> so that is the last of the Hakuhodo brushes that I picked up from the show. And I actually went back and I decided I wanted to get their soap. And I've already used the soap to wash all of the brushes that I showed you here today. And I love it. I think it's great. I will be using this brush soap on my nicest brushes and not uh, wasting it on more of my workhorse, rattier, uh, synthetic brushes that go through the mill. And um, I got the clear version because no added dye. It has a nice, soft, clean scent to it. And it really foams up when you swirl the brushes. So I usually wet the bristles of my brush a little bit, always pointing the brush down so the water doesn't seep into the ferrule. Take a swipe of the soap, and then in my hand, lightly lather that up and rinse well. And to go along with this soap, I also picked up a towel, one of their brush cleaning cloths. I have not used this yet, and I got to talking with the gentleman at the booth. I think he's someone big at Hakuhodo, but I never got his name, actually. And he gifted me with a second one in the brown color. So that was so sweet, and I will be using those. You don't know what a relief it is to be able to like finally put these brushes away in their proper spots because I've had them out here all week. Okay, I'm going to go in categories, so forgive me. Not everything I'm going to show you is from the show only. These two are foundations. This was gifted to me by Danny, my friend. And it's the Suku Nude Wear Liquid Foundation. It's the foundation I'm wearing today, and it's in the color 101 with SPF 20. I love this foundation. It comes in a dropper format. I've been using it a ton. It's so natural looking. I find that it dries down to be fairly matte on my dry skin, and it looks like skin 
not makeup-y at all. I could add and add and add, and it will add coverage without looking all that makeup-y. So I really love this. I like the bottle, the soft curve of this top of the bottle makes it look luxurious. I like everything about it really and I like the finish. It's not my all-time favorite. My all-time favorite has to go to my Surratt, but this is a very beautiful foundation. Speaking of the Surratt, my friend was able to get me a steep discount on my favorite Surratt foundation. This is the Dewdrop foundation in the color number two. They had one left of my color, and so I snatched it up and um, I was able to get a really good discount on this. So. Thank you, Danny, for being such a fabulous way to get my makeup at such a great discount. Yes, absolutely fabulous. My favorite. My favorite. Also a dropper foundation, but with a slightly different packaging. I'm still using the other one that I have, so yes, this will be my backup. Okay, okay, okay. I guess I'll go through blushes. Okay, my friend Danny gave me so many blushes for Christmas, so many. Two Danessa Myricks liquid blushes. This one is in the color Ballet Slippers. This one is in the color Tutu. I'm not sure if I've used these on my channel yet because I've had this package from her for quite a while now. So pretty. They're very creamy, easy to blend out, give a nice luminosity, really gorgeous formula. She gave me four NYX Sweet Cheeks Glow Blushes. A few of these broke on the transit here, unfortunately. I still use them and love them. I haven't tried that many things from NYX, so it's really great to be able to try these brands and things that I haven't tried before. And I'm wearing this one today on my cheeks, Daydream. And then I've got this really pretty Citrine Rose. Love that name and that color. So you can see here, it has a little bit of shift to it. The one I'm wearing on my cheeks today is the Daydream see it here soft and glowy two matte shades rose and play gorgeous perfect pink and then this awesome yellow that I'm afraid is going to continue to break so I'm just gonna hold it like that and this one is called silence is golden I've used this one a lot actually surprisingly because it's yellow who would have thought but I use it all the time and then um, a whole freaking blush palette of cream blushes, killer, from Senna Cosmetics. I have also used this palette quite a bit since uh, Danny sent it over. How pretty is that? Senna Slip, Co Slip Cover Cream to Powder Palette Cheeky Blush Matte and Glow number one. These are so nice and creamy and they have great pigmentation. Just really beautiful blush formulation with such gorgeous colors. Oh, I am one lucky duck, let me tell you. Okay, so okay, so the blushes just keep on coming. I've got this by Terry, my very first by Terry product, you guys. Sun Designer Palette, number three, Tropical Sunset. This is so pretty on the cheeks. We've got some really pretty nude colors, a pink nude, a very glowy, simple ballet slipper type of nude, and a warm bronzer type of color. Where was that? Okay. Super pigmented. And these blush colors, also stunning. Look at that pigmentation. These are so pretty on. Very, very pretty palette. It comes with this fancy velvet pouch. So I picked up from a local Korean place, and this brand is called Misha. We've got two really cute cream products, stick products. This is a contour color. Really nice, cool tone. How cute are these <laughs> little bears? And this beautiful blush. And they had quite a few blushes to choose from, and this one just happened to 
speak to me the most. Really nice. Did I just touch my nose? Really like this texture. It's sort of a cream to powder type of situation. We have another by Terry product. This one is a lip product and it is in the shade 2 Vintage Nude and it's their it's like a gloss, but it's sort of like this jelly texture, and it's so shiny and beautiful without being sticky at all, and it sort of sets down and is long-wearing, and it's freaking cute. It's just cute. It has this slight scent to it that I wasn't sure about at first, but it's kind of grown on me. How perfect is that mauve nude? I'm actually so obsessed with this. I want to put it on right now. But I've got this other glass that I'll show you in a minute. Oh, should we start the eyeshadow palettes? I don't know, man. Should we? I guess so. That's kind of where we're at. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you. I actually picked up over Christmas time. And this one is from Muse Beauty Pro. Now you guys, I got to go meet up with Celeste and Brian from Muse Beauty Pro and it was the most amazing experience. I can't, forgive me if I've shown this to you already. I can't remember where I'm at with showing you new products in my collection. I'm just at that point, you know, I just can't remember. But I finally picked up the Dark Edit Vizier palette. And this baby has been such a favorite lately. These colors are so pretty. Like, they're so pigmented. It's insane. And just mm, delicious. You guys know Vizier shadows are my favorites. <sighs> this gold. I don't know where to put it. Oh. So pretty. So, forgive me if I've showed that to you already. I just... Okay. Laura Mercier. We've got a stunner of a palette. This is a palette full of shimmery, glamorous pop colors. And it is called the Fine Art Eyeshadow Palette. My friend Danny spoiled me this year. Oh my goodness. This is absolute insanity. I mean, all of these are gorgeous. I could pick up any one of these, but they're so shiny. It's incredible. I don't think the camera is doing it justice. They're so incredibly sparkly. Some are a little bit more like duochrome and shiny, and some are just sparkle. This is a this is a keeper for sure of a palette. It's like so good, and I've used it a lot and adore it. Eye mats. I picked up some incredible eyeshadows from Moira Cosmetics. Now, I had a question in my previous video, my date night get ready with me video asking to swatch the Moira shadows that I have, the cream lucent shadows, lucent cream shadows, excuse me. And I have three already and I picked up four more at the makeup show. So while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the three that I do have and then swatch the new ones. Okay, starting with the color I think I used in my tutorial. This one is called 16 Eclipse. My favorite one. It's got this gorgeous shift to it. This one is 12 Earth. I have swatches of these three up on my Instagram too now. In answer to that fabulous question. I got on the video. And then this one is called Neptune number 14. So these were the three that I started off with and the three that got me hooked and made me just 
absurdly excited to pick up more. This one here is number 17, Nimbus. Reminds me very much of Harry Potter. And it's pretty much to die for as well. Um, what you probably can't see on camera is all the multicolored glitter that is strewn throughout each one of these. This newest one, Nimbus, has pink, gold, green, I mean, it's, you name it, rainbow. I mean, these are something that, like, I wish the camera, my camera's just not good enough to show you all of that. And this one is 10 Jupiter. So glad they had this in stock. It looked like they didn't, that it was sold out, and then they had more stock in back after we asked. It's, mm, I almost wore that today, but instead I went for a palette that I'll show you in a minute. Okay, this one is number two, Infinity, and it's a beautiful silvery taupe. Definitely a me type of shade, that sort of oyster sort of color. That's the least rainbowy of what I've got. And this one here is number 11, Saturn, and it's a flip, pink, orange, to green gold flip. Did I just overlap? Jeez, oh, why do I do this? You get the idea. So these are my Moira cream shadows. Trust me, in person they are absolutely mesmerizing. Yes, I'm sad to wipe these off but I have more mesmerizing shadows to show you so bye bye I got to see another cool pro type of store that Danny brought me to and I picked up this Elemon Aqua palette oh. this is the palette I'm wearing on my eyes today oh they were a dream to work with I barely worked at all this color right here is super unique and is on my eyes a lot. Um, mm. The best way I can describe it is an aqua to gold flip. In person, man, I just wish you could sit here right here with me and swatch all of this. I mean... Right. This was the first shadow I swatched. It has a deep indigo base with all these different beautiful glitters strewn throughout, like looking into a galaxy. Super finely milled glitter. Mm. Oh, that's pretty. It's, it just doesn't do it justice. And then this color is totally my type of color, the blue-purple, and super vibrant. Look at that. And then, of course, these neutrals are very easy to work with as well. Here's a really pretty shimmery pale yellow, very bell uh, cream. And this diamond topper, I keep calling it a diamond topper, it's just a very, very frosty white. And this one, which is what I have underneath my eyes. It's just a solid looking palette, right? Very pleased with that. And I've got quite a few more palettes to show you, so bear with me. Okay, so I have an order from Kaleidos Cosmetics. And let me tell you, I don't think I'll be placing another order with them. <sighs> they just, I don't know. My highlighter came broken. Okay, so I think I used it in a get ready with me. It is very pretty, but it came broken. That's not why I'm not going to order from them again. But I ordered four things. Two things came broken. The highlighter is stunning and I adore it. Then this palette, the palette I was most excited for, 
Astro Pink. Um, they refunded me five dollars because it came all gross looking. So I don't know if you can see from here, but around my favorite color, Neptune. I think it's Neptune. Um, that one just came with this ring of oil seepage around it, and I think it looks so ugly. I would not have bought it at a $5 discount with it looking like this. And they, I, I asked them, like, can I, is there any way I can exchange this, return it? I don't want it like this. And they ignored me completely. They, and then I followed up and was like, hey, and they, like, answered about the highlighter but not this so i'm just not happy with it i don't like that i paid money for a new palette that came looking funky just not pleased and the fact that they ignored my email um yes so anyway i got that and i got um Sci-Fi Green. Pretty. And they swatch nicely. And then I got Electro Turquoise. But we are not going to recommend Kaleidos. Yeah, I'll use them. But I was definitely disappointed at like how they just like ignored me. Another really exciting eyeshadow palette I haven't purchased from this brand in years. And it is Jeffree Star Cosmetics. The last purchase I made was the Androgyny palette, which I loved, 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 loved that palette. But um, yes, nothing else has appealed to me really, except for his Gag Me highlighter, which, which hasn't arrived yet, but it's on the way. And then the... Conspiracy Large Palettes. This is the palette that broke the internet. You all know about it. You probably all have it. Yes, I'm very, very pleased. It is ginormous packaging, but I knew that. I saw it in person before I got it. Beautylish had a restock. It wasn't technically a restock. It was just the stock that they saved to replace damaged palettes or palettes that never got received, things like that. Problematic orders. And they waited their period, and then sold that back stock. So I was able to snag this, and I'm very happy with the color story. It just gives me so much happiness. I can't even tell you. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I think the embossings are really cute. I think the color is like, so pretty. This is permanent to his line, so don't worry if you haven't been able to snag this one and you want it. Like, colors like that kill me. Like, I just think it's a creative palette and it gives me inspiration. And I do really like his eyeshadow formula. I just, you know, haven't purchased in so long. And I think it's cute. I don't really know who Shane Dawson is. My friend Ivan told me and I've forgotten who he is. But fabulous palette that I'm very excited about. Definitely my bulkiest eyeshadow palette ever. I've got a single here. This is a pigment from a brand I don't know how to pronounce. Klepash Pro? K-L-E-P-A-C-H and it's such a gorgeous pigment. 717 Oct... Wait, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. O-C-T-P-O-B. Don't quote me on that. I like, can't really see the letters very well in this lighting. But... When I first watched this, I about died. Look at that. Oh, it is so pretty. This is a new favorite for sure. Look at that magic. And then it's buildable. Like, what is this? What is this? It's freaking perfection. 
I'm so, so excited about this. This is like magic in a tub. There's a lot of mention of Danny in this video because I was at her house and she did hook me up with most of this makeup. And I have to 100% give her credit for this one again. So this is the Sigma Enchanted palette. And she was like, do you want to see the most slept on palette of 2019? And I was like, hell yeah, I want to see the most slept on palette of 2019. What is, what is she about to show me? So before pulling out the palette, she pulled up the Sigma's Instagram and some online presence showing me pictures of the palette online and she was like this does not grab your interest does it? I was like no it looks so dull and basic and then she took out her palette and opened it and it was like the earth moved, the heavens opened, a treasured box just like was presented in front of me. The glitter in this is off the charts and I'm hoping you'll be able to see it on camera but I have a feeling you won't let's see if I turn on this light Ugh, this looks not as good as it does in person I'm telling you guys you need this palette go get this palette as soon as possible you won't regret it it's so pretty it's so pretty let me just give you a couple swatches so you can bask in the glory that is this glittery amazing pigment <sighs> okay. it has this multicolored glitter throughout it incredible sh just stunning shifty oh, it's just not doing it justice is it I don't know what about this is that's so hard to pick up, but it's seriously freaking stunning. I mean, absolutely. It's just so pretty. It's just so pretty. I don't know how to get it to show up. If you see it in person, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. So, so gorgeous. The sparkle is unreal. It reminds me of the Pat McGrath extra special colors. You're just going to have to trust me on that because there's no way I'm going to be able to show it to you on here. Not good enough. The mattes are nice. Maybe not my favorite matte formulation ever, but they are very nice and buildable. Very, very pretty. Okay, only just like, I don't know, 10 more products. <laughs> okay, so three Pat McGrath palettes. Finally got my hands on the Star Wars 2 that I was dying to get my hands on. And then the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Sublime Golden Opulence, which you can now get on Sephora. So if you want it, don't sleep on it. I have to say that this one is so annoying because you can't open this all the way so it's impossible to like take a picture of it with it open because it always just shuts on you and it's really hard to just have it sit down it won't stay open so you have to keep opening it using your hand or something anyway I know stupid great but it's little things like that that makes expensive palettes just maybe not worth it for some people um, but it is stunning packaging quite Quite like that and um, the colors are a little bit basic but very very pretty I'm swatching all the shimmers first and then I'll swatch the mattes it's your usual Pat McGrath creamy thicker metallic formula very very pretty not all that duochrome which is fine. Not everything has to be. But I do have to say, if you do have the 10 pan rose palette from her, which I do not have, I don't think you need this. Also, if it were between this and that special pink quad that she came up with, I would probably choose the pink quad, but I don't have that one either. So, yes, there's that. And you guys... 
either have this or don't and probably don't want me to go too much into it let me know if you do but I don't see why you would seeing how hard it is to get your hands on those palettes now okay so lethal cosmetics I know right I know okay made my own palettes three of them with lethal and this only took about, I don't know, two months to get. I don't know. It's been a long time. Here's the first palette I created. Super pretty. I mean, look at this. I mean, pretty killer, right? My favorite of the palettes I created. And um, this pretty green. The one thing I have to say is with Lethal, I kind of feel like they do metallic, but not much like shimmer or dual chrome or glitter. Like, I don't know. I felt a little like restrained in what I could order from them color wise and formula wise. That being said, I am very pleased with the formulas I have tried. The all matte palette I created. Aren't those colors pretty? Like this one is very unique. Lots of unique colors, I suppose. Maybe I was being too critical. Really, really pleased and excited to play more with those. But overall, I really like the quality of the actual palettes and how each pan game package was very rather luxe. So, yeah, very pleased with that. This actually just arrived today, and this I ordered while I was away at iMats. I have wanted this for almost a year now, or whenever it came out, and I knew my friend Danny had it, and so I saw it at her house, and that's when I was like, yes. Because I felt the palette, I swatched it, I played around with it, and I loved it as much as I did online. And this is from Nomad Cosmetics, the Tokyo palette. Intense eyeshadow palette. Um, yeah, Tokyo themed. How cute. I don't know if you can see, but embossed are kitty faces with different expressions and then down here we've got all these special shades like this one I hate to ruin the embossing because it's so cute but I really do like how they swatch so we'll see how they perform on the eyes overall the packaging came very nicely packaged with a really cute postcard to me from Tokyo so it was very very cute in presentation I've been eyeing that palette for a good long while now. Okay, so a few more things that are rather cute. I have this Dose of Colors Lucky Eyeliner. I used it in my waterline today. And if they had a blue that matched my Marc Jacobs blue, I would have bought it. But alas, I have to reorder my Marc Jacobs into the blue. This one is green, and it's so creamy and beautiful. Really, really like that. And the staying power seems really nice. Ooh, why didn't you tell me what a mess I was? Then, two things from Kimchi Cosmetics. At IMATS LA, Kimchi the drag queen was there. And we just stumbled upon her meet and greet and it was the most fabulous situation ever. I was so, so excited and uh, She's tall. She's so tall. I was like, whoa. My sweet friend Danny, always spoiling me, bought this light up mirror for me. Here you can see it lights up. How cute. And had it signed by Kimchi. And I got to have a picture taken, clearly. She also got me this fabulous lip gloss, which is so shiny and sparkly it's insane it's got all these multicolored glitter I, it's just like pure glitter it's really cute so i think we have whew, 
made it. What have I done? <laughs> this is... I have, uh... Mm, I'm sure I've missed something, too. Embarrassingly enough. If you've made it all the way through, I am impressed. Thank you for being a part of my Cake Face family. You are very, very kind, and I love you. And how cute are these pictures? I've been looking at my my nephew. Cute, right? That is it, folks. That is all. That is everything, and I can't believe we made it. We made it. Oh, I did miss a couple things. I already am seeing them. Jeez, I've got a... Oh, I've got a couple brushes here I forgot to show. One from um, Kevin Aquan. And now I've lost it. It's here somewhere. That I found at TJ Maxx. Um, the blush brush. And this Sonia Kashuk. Not Sonia G, Sonia Kashik concealer brush that I'm low key loving. Not as much as my new hourglass, but um, loving this one as well. Love that it's flat top. Okay, if I could just keep looking, I'm sure I'll find more and more that I forgot to show you guys. So I'm gonna stop it here before I drive myself crazy. Love you lots, and I will catch you in my next one. Bye, guys.